A couple weeks ago, a task force from the Council of Foreign Relations issued a lengthy report chaired by Condoleezza Rice, former Secretary of State, and an excerpt said, the country will not be able to keep pace, much less lead globally, unless it moves to fix the problems it has allowed to fester for too long. Educational failure puts the United States' future, economic prosperity, global position, and physical safety at risk. Scary stuff. Sounds an awful lot like this excerpt from a report from 1983. Our nation is at risk. Our once unchallenged preeminence in commerce, industry, science, and technological innovation is being overtaken by competitors throughout the world. The educational foundations of our society are presently being eroded by a rising tide of mediocrity that threatens our very future as a nation and as a people. Sounds an awful lot like this report from 1958. <laughs> the schools are in terrible shape. What has long been an ignored national problem, Sputnik has made a recognized crisis. You see, first it was the Russians, then it was the Japanese, then it was India. Now China's eaten our lunch, according to Thomas Friedman. There's very few things that people in this country agree on, particularly Democrats and Republicans. And one thing that we've agreed on for over 50 years is that our schools suck. <laughs> how, how do we know that our schools suck? Well, if you look at international test scores, it turns out that since the early 60s, the Brookings Institute's been keeping track of how we do on international tests, and the U.S. does about average globally. We don't do that great. Now, there's a lot of reasons we can explain why international test scores are specious. A lot of, state, or a lot of countries don't test all students. There's tracking that occurs. Um, many countries' kids are older when they take the test than American kids. One big reason is we really don't care about international tests. They, they just don't matter. There has never been a study that has correlated scores on international tests with economic prosperity, with, with citizen happiness, with any other indicator. But when you do look at the international test scores of American students, you'll find that our top 20% do better than the top 20% of any country in the world. And our lowest 20% do about as bad as any country, as bad as, as non-industrialized countries. There is no country in the world that has as much variation in scores as the United States does. Now, there's a joke that educational researchers like to issue. It's a, a challenge that if you tell them how many doorknobs a kid has in their home, they can predict within a point or two what the kid's ACT score is going to be. Because you see, socio household income and socioeconomic status accounts for about 80% of a kid's achievement. Here in Marquette, Michigan, the graduation rate is 95 plus percent. In our own state, Detroit schools, fewer than 32% of the kids who start school as freshmen will graduate by the time they're seniors, and fewer than 50 will ever graduate. We don't have an education crisis in our country. We have an education gap crisis. So what's the solution? Well, about 10 years ago, with 90% support in the House, 90% support in the Senate, our politicians passed the No Child Left Behind Act that was supposed to change educational performance and help us compete in the global marketplace. Well, we're now 10 years out, and the gap didn't close, and achievement didn't rise. But what did happen? Well, as part of No Child Left Behind, we mandated that all kids in grades three through eight had to take standardized tests in math and science every year. So the Center for Educational Progress has found that math and reading at the elementary level have increased by over 150 minutes per week in the No Child Left Behind era. Where did that 150 minutes come from? Well, social studies and science are being taught 75 minutes less to each subject. Moreover, schools are dropping art, PE, music, to make room to teach math and reading because those are tested on standardized tests. Now, you would think that after the colossal failure of No Child Left Behind, the failure to close the education gap, that our politicians would get smarter. Not so lucky. President Obama re recently led an initiative called Race to the Top, which is a $4.5 billion incentive program that mandates that for states to qualify for the money that they have to 
test more often and in more subjects. And moreover, they have to require that teachers' evaluations be determined by how well their students do on multiple choice tests. Now just stop and think for a second how absurd it is that we judge the value of children by a multiple choice standardized test. Imagine if in your job, your pay was determined by how well you did on a multiple choice test about your job. You wouldn't stand for it. So, so why do we stand for it with our kids? So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we have to recognize is that this gap happens long before kids hit kindergarten. If you talk to an early childhood teacher, they will tell you that, that the gap is very apparent when the kids walk into school at the kindergarten level. Uh, two researchers in the 80s videotaped every single conversation in a variety of homes across the country with preschool children. And they found that in homes that are in the top quartile of, of um, uh, wealth, um, the kids in those homes hear 1,500 more words per hour than kids in low-income homes. Those kids hear 8 million more words than poor kids. So we need to be creative about early childhood programs. We need to think right from prenatal nutrition to in-home support to more aggressive preschool programs. We have to address this problem early. The second thing we need to do is just stop standardized tests. It's just silly. <laughs> Third thing we need to do is we need to hold teachers accountable. But you know what? We all know who the bad teachers are. You don't need to test their students to find out who they are. Okay? Because, you know, the, the consequences of what it does to the good teachers are far greater than trying to catch some of the bad ones. We need to reject the idea of standardization. Because the kids in Detroit need different things than the kids in Marquette, Michigan. The kids in Marquette, Michigan want to read different books than the kids in Detroit. But having national standards that require all kids to study the same things at the same time as part of the Race to the Top Act is going to handcuff the best of our teachers. And let me tell you something about our teachers. They're the best in the world. I had a student teacher a couple of years ago wanted to student teach in China. And so he, he's student teaching in China, and one of the first days he has his students uh, he puts a post on the board, and he has the students turn to each other, ask their partner a question, and then you know, they're going to share the question with the class, and, and he can't get the students to talk. They, they won't talk to each other. So he works with them for a few days, and before he finds out, there's a bunch of adults watching him teach in his class. So after a week or so, the principal of the school tells him that he has to give a workshop to the other teachers, um, some other teachers from the district. So they cart him off across town, doesn't really know what to expect, but they say, we want you to talk about those American teaching methods. So he goes into this lecture hall, and there's like 400 teachers, and he's talking about, you know, things that we do, like get students to talk to each other, and um, just, just simple things that we do in the U.S. So he gets done with the lecture, and they introduce him to the minister of education from, from the region of China he's at, and they yank him from student teaching. And they make him a professor. And so he's a professor at the, their largest teacher ed program. So what do we need to do? We need to let kids solve real problems. We need to let kids create knowledge rather than regurgitate knowledge. We need to give kids authentic experiences to ask questions. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, we teach for the first two years of a kid's life, we teach them to walk and talk, and then we spend the next 10 years, 15 years, teaching them to sh sit down and shut up. If you watch kindergartners come into school, they're full of questions. They love learning. Look at some senior high school students. They're like zombies. <laughs> we need to engage students in real problems, in real questions, things that standardized tests cannot measure. Because all standardized tests do is they rank and sort students. And I'll leave you with a quote from Plutarch from, the, uh, uh, from ancient Greece, a philosopher and educator. And he said, children's minds are not vessels to be filled but fires to be ignited. Thank you. <laughs>